Datuk Sri Najib to enter defence over 42 million ringgit SRC case. Muslims should highlight Israeli injustices against Palestinians. You're watching the evening edition of News on 2. I'm Adrian Seat. The High Court today ordered Adato Sri Najib Tun Raza to enter his defence on seven charges of misappropriating 42 million ringgit in SRC International's Nyan Brahad funds. Justice Mohammad Nazlan Mohammad Ghazali made the decision after finding that the prosecution had established a prima facie case against the former Premier, 66, on three counts of criminal breach of trust, three counts of money laundering and one count of abuse of power in relation to the funds. Justice Mohammad Nazlan said the court found the elements of using position, dishonesty and money laundering by the accused had been proven by the prosecution. He also said evidence recorded in the minutes of meetings showed that, that Dato Sri Najib was present during two meetings which approved government guarantees totaling 4 billion ringgit for SRC by the Retirement Fund Incorporated or KWAP. The judge added that former Second Finance Minister Dato Sri Ahmad Husni Hanatzla tried to intervene in SRC matters but was prevented by the accused. The court fixed 3rd and 4th of December, 9th until the 12th of December and 16th until the 19th of December for Dato Sri Najib to enter his defence. After the judge completed reading out the judgment, Dato Sri Najib was offered three options to make his defence and he chose to give evidence under oath from the witness stand and be subjected to cross-examination by the prosecution. The prosecution team is led by Attorney General Tan Sri Tommy Thomas. The team also comprises ad hoc Deputy Public Prosecutor Dato V. Sitabaram, while Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah leads a group of defence counsel. Muslims should strive to get the world on their side by highlighting the injustices that have been perpetrated by the Israelis against Muslims in Palestine. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohammed underscored that it is not true that all Europeans or Americans are against Islam or Muslims or the Palestinians, as many are in fact sympathetic. Tun Dr. Mahathir also stressed that Muslims must realize that acts of terror committed elsewhere in the world purportedly in support of Palestine will not likely result in success. In fact, he said, Palestinians have been long losing more land to the Jews. The better thing to do is to gain the sympathy of the world by showing that the Israelis are the perpetrators of injustice against the Muslim. We need to have more people to support the struggles of the Muslim. Acts of terror does not help in winning support. In any case, acts of terror does not give any results at all. What gives result is a good strategy using diplomacy and other means to win over the support of many people. When addressing the International Colloquium Series on Islamic Understanding on the theme of demystifying Islamophobia towards a better understanding of Islam, organized by the Institute of Islamic Understanding Malaysia or IKIM in Kuala Lumpur today, Tun Dr. Mahathir also said that while acts of terror by Palestinians were condemned, Israel was allowed to get away with international crimes. The Premier said the only way to prevent more acts of terror is to understand why these terrorists exist. And he also pointed out that some Muslims resorted to what are considered acts of terror because of frustration and anger over the ongoing and worsening violations of Palestinian human rights. They themselves cannot, cannot do anything without being condemned by the whole world. So the sense of frustration and anger has grown and has become widespread. We can expect more acts of terror than a lessening of the acts of terror. The important thing is that we have to recognize the reasons for these acts of terror. These acts were due to the frustration and anger 
felt by many Muslims, in, of course including many Palestinians, over their inability to get back their land. Meanwhile, Tun Dr. Mahathir said that for a multi-religious country to be stable, any discussions about religion should not involve a running down others. The Premier pointed out that anyone can discuss religion in Malaysia, but it must be done in a rational manner. A total of 280 early voters comprising police personnel in the Tanjong PI parliamentary by-election will cast their ballots tomorrow. Now, Election Commission or EC Chairman Adato Asha Aziz Harun said in a statement that they will vote at the Police Family Association or Perkep Building at Pontian District Police Headquarters or IPD in Pontian. The early voting centre in Perkep Building, Pontian, IPD for the Pekan Nanas constituency, Channel 1, will be open from 8am to 1pm, while the Kukup constituency or Channel 2 will be open from 8am to 5pm. Dato Asha said the early voting process will be monitored by the agents of the contesting candidates and observers appointed by the EC. Once the early voting process ended, the ballot boxes will be kept at the police station lockup. The counting will be made on the polling day, 16th of November, at the Vote Attaling Centre in Pontian District Officers' Meeting Room and will be monitored by agents of the contesting candidates and election observers. Meanwhile, Johor Police Chief Commissioner Dato Mohamad Kamaruddin Maddin is urging political parties contesting in the Tanjung PI by election to obtain police permits for their campaigns, especially when using election vehicles. Dato Mohamad Kamaruddin said this is to avoid any confrontations amongst contesting parties when they cross paths while campaigning from their vehicles. Speaking at a press conference at the Pontian Police Headquarters today, Dato Mohamad Kamaruddin said some 447 permits have been issued so far, including 75 for Pakatan Harapan, 264 for Barisan National, 99 for Gerakan, 4 for Berjasa and 5 for the independent candidates. Terapati campaign akan bertambah rancak lagi dan kita mengharapkanlah semua parti-parti yang bertanding supaya mematuhi peraturan-peraturan yang ditetapkan di bawah Atta Pilihan Raya 1954 uh, elakkan daripada sebarang provokasi-provokasi yang boleh mengganggu uh, keketamaan awam. So far, he said the police have received 28 police reports on issues connected with the by-election set for this Saturday. He also said only three investigation papers have been opened, adding that no arrests have been made and the campaign is going on without incidents. The Health Ministry are still in a process of a discussion to come up with the best mechanism to control drug prices. Its Minister, Dato Sri Dr. Zukifli Ahmad, told the lawmakers that the mechanism are essentially to safeguard the welfare of those under the B40 category. Kita tahu bahawa pihak swasta suka menggunakan uh, original drug ataupun yeah, patented drug dengan kerana ya, itu adalah uh, ubat-ubatan berbanding dengan generik yang lebih uh, murah mereka suka menggunakan di patent drug kerana ia adalah jauh lebih mahal ya uh, perkara ini sedang ya, dan sedang sedang kami bukan sedang maknanya sudah beberapa round pusingan telah kita adakan ya, adakan perbincangan untuk akhirnya mendapat satu mekanisme mengawal harga uh, ubat-ubatan he was replying Kota Melaka MP Ku Poi Tiong. Dato Sri Dr Zukifli had previously stated that the Health Ministry will work with the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs to set a ceiling price to regulate medicine prices and the matter was also approved by the Cabinet. It is noted that medicine prices falls under the Price Control and Anti-Profitering Act 2011. 
The Dewan Rakyat proceedings were halted for almost 10 minutes today after communications and multimedia Deputy Minister Edin Shazli Sith suffered breathing difficulties during a question and answer session at 10.30 a.m. Edin was reported to have just arrived at the Dewan Rakyat and was about to sit down when he appeared to be lethargic and collapsed in his chair. Now, the incident was confirmed by his special task officer, Farahia Zubir. At that time, Housing and Local Government Deputy Minister Dato Raja Kamarul Bahrain, Raja Ahmad Baharudin Shah, was in the midst of replying to a question from Wong Hon Wai. Deputy Speaker Dato Mohammad Rashid Hasnun then halted the proceedings and called for a medical team to treat the Deputy Minister. Kuching MP Dr. Kelvin Yi Li Yuan was seen to provide immediate assistance to the Kuala Pila MP before he was joined by a few other MPs and a medical team. Edin was later escorted to the Parliament Clinic on a wheelchair and was given emergency treatment by its chief, Dr. R. Murugesu, before being taken to the National Heart Institute, or IJN. The Deputy Minister is now believed to be in stable condition and currently being warded at the Cardiac Care Unit for further examinations. Previously, on the 21st of October, Nibong Tabal MP Dato Manso Othman fainted while debating the Supply Bill 2020. In other news, two men were burned to death when fire raised a house at Taman Rejang Persiaran Brook in Sibu Sarawak early this morning. Acting Sibu Fire and Rescue Department Chief Wan Kamarudin Wan Ahmad said the department received the distress call at 2.10 a.m. before dispatching a team to the scene. A team of 22 firemen and two officers from Cebu Central and Sungai Mira fire stations were rushed to the scene. Upon arriving to the scene, the firemen were informed there were two victims that were trapped in the burning house. One Kamarudin said the firemen found two bodies at the scene after the operation ended. One of the victims was identified as Lao Yu Hing, age 52, while the other victim has not been identified yet. Now, the bodies have been handed over to the police for further action. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Coming up next, plus to address issues faced by touch and go users. That story up next, stay with us. The local government ministry urges university students enrolled in engineering courses to expand their connection with industry players. Its minister, Zuraida Kamarudin, said her ministry is prepared to assist universities to connect with industry players and developers in order to expose students to the sector. Okay, dalam manifesto kerajaan yang baru untuk membina satu juta rumah affordable house, rumah mampu milik seratus uh, ribu setahun jadi ada peluang-peluang job opportunity and potential jobs uh, a lot there for them untuk capture eh. jadi cuma uh, kebersediaan mereka untuk uh, lebih sikit agresif untuk ke depan dan start uh, communicating or engage dengan developers I think our students has to be taught to, uh, to to engage with the corporate society and with the industry. Then, bila dia dah keluar, dah graduate, dia tidak rasa janggal untuk uh, apa ni, uh, berinteraksi dengan uh, potensi, maji, potential majikan. Eh? Zuraida was met at a career day event held at University Technology Mara, Shah Alam, where she also gave a talk on the housing issues with the students. Amongst issues discussed were strategic housing locations, housing costs, as well as bank loans. PLUS Malaysia Berhad or PLUS has been carrying out various efforts to address difficulties experienced by highway users following the move to end the reload facilities at the Toll Plaza exit lanes effective 5th of November that drew mixed reactions from netizens. Its managing director Dato Azman Ismail said PLUS would enhance cooperation with Touch and Go service provider to sort out any concerns but it would take some time. Speaking as a guest in RTM's Selamat Pagi Malaysia program today, Dato Azman said currently consumers have the option either to reload using an electronic wallet or e-wallet or touch-and-go card reload centres across the country. He added that PLUS has provided 11,000 reload points, 22 touch-and-go spot centres and counters, 68 reload machines, 27 customer service centres, 
and 65 reload lanes and entry lanes at selected toll plazas. He also advised motorists for safety reasons not to alight from their vehicles if they could not drive through the boom barrier at toll plaza due to insufficient balance in their touch-and-go carts. Instead, he said road users should press the intercom button for assistance from a PLUS a customer service officer. He added that PLUS highway users have to understand that the move to end the reload facilities for touch-and-go users at toll plazas was aimed at reducing traffic congestion. Cases of radioactive materials abuse have been increasing and without a strict and proper regulation and constant monitoring, cases like theft, sabotage, unauthorized access, illegal transfer or other malicious acts involving nuclear material will be out of control. Now, based on these concerns, the Malaysian Nuclear Agency is committed to its improving its security system to ensure the safety of the people. Kita ni apa ni agensi agensi yang membantu jabatan kerajaan lain apa teknikal support agensi. Eh? Jadi mana mana yang jabatan kerajaan yang minta bantuan kita kita akan bantu termasuklah dalam beberapa macam tu jika mereka memerlukan bantuan kita kita akan membantu mereka. Eh, jadi itu tanggungjawab kita di nuklear Malaysia lah. Through the Malaysian Nuclear Agency Strategic Plan 2012 to 2020, the enhancement of radiation security and regulatory programs will continue to be strengthened. And that item concludes this evening news on two. In our top story, Dato Sri Najib to enter defense over 42 million ringgit SRC case. News on two will be back at 12:30 tomorrow. Until then, I'm Adrian Seat. Thanks for watching.